So let's get back to mistake number four, which is winging it. I'm talking about when you're talking to meeting planners. You don't want to just be totally spontaneous with it. You want to have thought it through first before you talk to people. So remember I was telling you how I got to be the keynote speaker in front of a thousand human resources people? Well, many professional speakers who had been in the business much longer than me couldn't figure out how I got a speaking engagement there when they had been trying for years. And I found out afterwards the reason the meeting planner chose me to speak over others. And it was because... I think I planned my pitch very well, along with the other things I'm talking about here today. So your pitch is basically the first thing you say to perk the interest of the meeting planner, so how you get your foot in the door, and how you do this can make or break your ability to get those engagements. So this is going to make it really easy if you just fill in the blanks on this template. You can do this. In fact, say to yourself right now, I can do this. Did you say it? Put your hands in the air, both hands in the air. I can do this, yes, <laughs> because you can. And it's what you say to yourself that makes all the difference, right? So planning and deliver your pitch. The first thing I did was I found out when he was going to do his decision-making. So I had good timing. And then I kept my name front of mind during those few weeks. Plus I only sent him a brief summary of key information about myself. Now most speakers send huge long emails with three attachments and five links and that's going to get your stuff deleted. <laughs> now another thing I had going for me was that I knew the program chair had very little time to devote to the task of finding speakers and so I was enthusiastic and persistent. So I wasn't naggy, but I just kept saying how much I'd love to be the speaker there. I made it very easy for him to say yes. <laughs> and another thing I had going for me was a good video clip. Now he was used to hiring a celebrity speaker. And at the time I hadn't authored a book or won an Olympic gold medal, but I did have a video clip he watched and he liked it. So if you don't already have a video clip of yourself speaking to a live audience, you know, you can offer to speak for free to a group and have it videotaped, or you can just speak directly to a camera like I've done here. People need to get a sense of your style, your energy, the look in your eyes, right? A, a video paints a thousand words. Now I had a fifth thing that made the biggest difference, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But before we do that, let's look at a bad pitch. So type into the chat why you think this wouldn't work so well. Hi, I'm Janice Reed, and you don't know me, but I do presentations on SEO, internet marketing, website building, branding, and social media. I can speak on any of those topics. I've been a trainer for Royal College, Rogers Seminars at Prestige E University. I have a degree in marketing from Columbia University, and I've written a book called SEO Made Easy. Let me know if you have any events I can speak at. Call me back. Okay, why doesn't that work? <laughs> Write a few things in there. Well, one thing is, as I said before, it's a big list of a whole bunch of things and a big list of where she studied and she didn't give her contact details and didn't really know anything about the event and didn't try to link her expertise to the event. So let's look at a better pitch. And again, you can type into the chat why you think this is a better pitch. So hi. I'm Janice Freed, and I'm connecting to you through Rita at Biz West. Apparently, we both own miniature schnauzers who can both catch a frisbee, a sure sign we should meet. At any rate, she mentioned you were looking for speakers right now for the Small Business Forum. I do presentations on how to magnetize your ideal clients through blog curation. And I noticed your theme is magnetizing sales. Well, this topic does that. It went over really well at the social media forum. And you have a similar audience, so I'm thinking it might be a good fit. Blogging is my specialty, and I have an international following of over 10,000 people. How best to make a proposal? Again, I'm Janice Reed. You can call me back at or message me through, and she gives her website. I look forward to connecting. Now, what makes that better? There's a whole bunch of things that make it better. So, type your stuff into the chat. First off, she's a connection through somebody else. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, and she does something fun that connects them, something personal. If you can add something personal, that's very helpful. And she knows about a specific event 
and she knows their theme of the event and she connects her topic to their theme. She just lists one topic and she gives a bit of credibility building. She's got 10,000 people and she's just looking for it to be a good fit, right? That Those terms, I'm looking to see if it's a good fit is much better uh, if you say that. You're looking for a win-win outcome, right? You're not trying to sell anything to anyone. That makes a big difference. And she asks a question. This is very important. How best to make a proposal? If you put a question in your email that's easy to answer, you're going to way more likely get a response than if you don't. And again, she gives her contact details. It's amazing how many people forget to do that. Now, give a website, if possible, that's easy for people to type in if they hear it, right? And uh, because people will go to your website first before contacting you to see if you're legitimate. Now, if you don't have a website, send them to your LinkedIn page because you can put a whole bunch of stuff up there like videos and stuff you speak on there. So no need to wait till you, you know, two years later till your website's done if you don't have it. LinkedIn's good for that. So here's your template. You can do this, right? Your name and how you're connected to them something personalized, playful, memorable, your hooky speech title and how it solves a problem the audience has. Don't get all fancy and weird and artsy with your title (laughs) unless you're famous and everybody knows who you are and what you're about. Those don't work. A really clear title and why you think your speech would be a good fit for their audience, something that builds your credibility and a question they will feel compelled to respond to and then just repeat your name and your contact information. So there's your template, fill it in. You can do this. Put your arms in the air. Yes, I can do this. And of course, you're going to put a date and when you're going to do it by, right? Right. So the trick is practice equals confidence. It's really a numbers game. The more people you contact, the more likely you're going to get a speaking engagement. It just always works that way. for me and others. And the best pitch wins. I really mean this. I have been a meeting planner and I have chosen someone with a great pitch over the Olympic medalist or the celebrity many times because I thought, you know, this just sounds way more relevant for my audience. Now the catch is focus on helping others. Just go in with that attitude. I'm there to help whether I get the engagement or not. As I said before, Here's a great tip if you want to get yourself in a good state. Read your testimonials before calling. Just like look over all these great ways you make a difference with your topic, with your speaking, uh, or even if you don't speak with your coaching or whatever it is that your business does. Um, So that'll give you that confidence and that tone in your voice that they'll pick up on. And then mentally rehearse your pitch. Uh, Just kind of go through it in your mind, you know, say it out loud first a few times and just feel what it's going to be like when you're on the phone with them. And uh, that's really important. Deb Connors, one of my clients who's a consultant and speaker on workplace wellness, she's like right before you call a meeting planner, just mentally rehearse how you want it to go. You know, look over your testimonials. That's what she does. That will, it does help eliminate self-consciousness. 